Do you know, I love being a pastor. I had a good time yesterday. I really did. But that one big event, that was a big event. Yes, it was. I want y'all to know that. Got to give out, most of everybody, I need to give out accolades to is here anyway. Amen. So is that all right if I still give them out? Can I give out some accolades? Amen. But that thing really opened my eye yesterday. To show me who was really down for the ride. Yesterday, just watching. And I was a little perturbed yesterday. But I'm not going to address that. I'm going to address that on Tuesday with my leaders. And I'll address it again with pretty much the majority of the people here. Because the one that need to hear needs to be here. But we have to do better as far as God. Whatever you do in your house, whatever you do in your family, I'm not going to come control your house, control your kids, your job. We don't operate like that. But when it comes to the house of God, I'm going to uphold it. Whatever way it comes out is going to be in love, but i got to deal with it. I just want to say one thing today to get off my chest, but I will address it again. If we ever have another event and other church folk get there before Righteous Living Ministry, <laughs> I pray that it's not in the flesh. Because if it be in the flesh, I'm going to embarrass people. Because you embarrassed me yesterday. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I know some said they were doing some things, but I know we don't have a lot of people, but for those that were there from our church, some of us could have made it on time. And when I have a pastor friend coming early and jumping on the grill, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it was cute that he helped out. It's still embarrassing mm -hmm. to me. It, it, it don't work like that. <clears throat> that's unsat. That's unsat. We don't operate that. You said this is your church, then we got to be the forerunners. Amen. We got to be the forerunners. There's only one person here that really got that excuse. And that's you with these babies. You have some help. You get you get that. But there we go with the church again. If we was bigger, if we was bigger, we could have been like, sisters, can two people go and help her get those babies ready? Uh -huh. So she'd be ready. But we're not there yet. But this is how we're going to operate. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. But on a good note, let's get past that because I want to make sure this word get out because this word is fitting for the ones that's not here. So it's funny that they're not here. This is one, it's not a bad, it's actually a good word. We're going to talk about that. But I just want to first, I want to start backwards. I want to start from the top. Is that okay? All right. I want to say to Lady Bowman, I know that I can say just what I say, what you do in your house, that's between you and God. What you do in the church, you're going to do it. The same way she acted at home when we doing hospitality is what she did yesterday. The ball was dropped, but to keep from the church looking bad, she stepped smooth up, cooking, cooking on the grill, making it happen, making sure people were happy, everybody. She running on the grill, make sure she speak to everybody, and I appreciate that. I know she was pleasing to God, and then I also know that she knew she didn't want me to go off on nobody. So she kept it right. Then we had Sister Doreen. She had to deal with some personal things. But what she got there, who, 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 was you working the games too? No. Well, anyway, on those games, those kids ran you raggedy. <laughs> well, I think they all went home alive, though, right? I didn't get no phone call. That kid was so I know you delivered. <laughs> so I want to commend you on that. Because they were trying to get her to play games back to back. They, she was trying to tell them, I need a break. I'm not 10. But she was hanging with them. They just, they just wanted everything. And so I'm excited about that. Sister Lila, Rain, Hassan, they were there for me. They got no pastor be like, oh, well, you live at the house and you got to be there. No, you can be lazy. I'm about to yell at you. You're going you to catch a beat down later. But they were there. We took everything off the truck. We still got it done. I appreciate that. But it was actually a good turnout. Me personally, I'm not going to lie. My flesh, 
I was shocked. I was just like, my God. <laughs> but my spirit was just over, was overwhelmed with joy. I said, look at this thing. Everybody's just happy. And just to get, you know, old folks going like, to uh, confirm stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Just to get phone calls and, and texts from different older people that it was beautiful. We could see the maturity and how you operate and how the spirit people of God love and the spirit of excellence. And then to get a call from the bishop. Uh -huh. He was just like, wow, his wife called, and she was just like, it was beautiful, it was awesome. And so that just did my soul some good, let them know, yeah, we, you might see us as small, but we operate big. Because right. we want God to be pleased, amen? amen. Just my co-workers, they were just like, this was awesome, they had a good time, and they enjoyed this, I know I hear about more of that on one day. Amen. But even in all that, we have to do better. Amen. We can't be late for our own event. You know the event the next day, we didn't plan it a month ago. We planned this four or five months ago. Yes, the ball was dropped a little bit, but we still was playing. And everybody knew what it was. We, we need to be ready. We knew what time it would have to be. We, we have to do better with that. If there's one thing that bothers me more than all, almost spirits, is being late. <clears throat> we start on time. We, I don't care if it's three people. You've seen that today. Mm -hmm. One person. We're going we to make it happen. Yeah, right. Service, God's service don't dictate here. Amen. We don't operate right. like that. Amen. Amen. But all in all, it was beautiful. Everybody had a good time. We had to check some ghetto folks. I don't like ghetto Amen. when it comes to the kingdom. You don't come when you say you're a man or woman of God and pack a plates for your family. That's right. When other people are coming, that's out of order. Don't work like that. Amen. And I guess people don't know what it's like that. We, I'm not, we're not your buddies. It will get told just like it did. Back away from them plates. And they was embarrassed. That's your fault. You shouldn't have did that. You got caught. You can see in their face. I was looking around scanning because I didn't know who it was. But I seen some people. They started fumbling and, and looking for stuff. And they were sorry. I said, okay, I got it. But we don't, we don't roll like that. Then. That's that spirit. Oh, we're going to, oh, I'm not, we're not going to tell them. We'll get them after the event. No, you doing it now? You get told now. That's right. You're going to sit in church? We're going to expose you in church. Why you didn't have a meeting with me? You didn't do it in the meeting. And we don't operate like that. So if people are going to leave and don't get mad, so be it. I'm not, I know God called me to this thing. People that want to be saved are going to come regardless. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. No. They are right. They are right. I want everybody to hear. Amen. Amen. But I want to talk about something I was talking to. I passed a friend yesterday. We was talking about words. You know, everybody's all excited about what they're preaching at the church mm -hmm. today. And I was telling them, God was showing me that we understand salvation and we get it. But as a people in the body of Christ, we don't understand what we really have. Mm -hmm. We don't understand what's really on the inside of us. We really don't get the power, the authority, the anointing that's being held up in our bodies. We don't understand that we are temples of Christ. We don't understand that we house the very anointing that rose up from the dead. The very thing that walked on water. The very thing that healed the blind. The very thing that cast demons in the pig. The very thing that fed the multitude. The very thing that said, peace be still to the storm. That is in us. And we don't understand it. We don't understand the power that went down to hell. And took the keys from darkness and said, now I have all power. Yes, we don't yes. understand what we have because if we did, we wouldn't cry, we wouldn't get mad over circumstances. We wouldn't be sick every week. We wouldn't be frustrated and run from God when he didn't do nothing to us. We wouldn't do that. And we knew exactly what we had in us. Are we tired or um, I'm going to be a little late? We don't operate like that. If we understood what we had, we'll be early we be ready to give God the glory Amen. but we still thinking with a mindset of flesh and carnality and naturalism and man we don't understand that we walk by faith and not by sight we don't understand that the flesh is dying daily that the spirit is rising up and rejuvenating itself every day as the bible says we just don't get it and I'm approving today is that alright? We got a few scripture. But I just want to give you a thought early. We want to talk about if you only knew what was on the inside. 
If you only knew what was on the inside. All right. A lot of times people go to auctions and they auction off cars or you see this show now that they auction off uh, storage houses. They call them storage wars or now you go to auction and buy a house. But if you notice, before you go to the auction and start bidding, they always give you the chance to look. Yes. I'm already excited about what I just said. They give you an opportunity to look to see what's on the inside to see if you really want it. That's it. That the car, they buffed it out, they waxed it, they cleaned the rims and the antennas, and you walk up, you know, it looks so good. But let me see the inside. Show me the car facts. So I can see the engine, if it was an accident, if the hoses are broken. Uh -huh. Then you unlock the car and you look in, there's cracks on the seats. The steering wheel is missing. The brakes, the line are cut. The gas tank is empty. And you like, the outside looks so good, but the inside uh -huh. was a mess. You go into this beautiful house and the yard is all did up. The path is cobblestone with roses going all up the path. You got to ring the gate to get into the house. The landscape and the porch is with white picketed fence with rocking chairs on it. The lemonade is on the porch and mama and them sitting on the porch and it is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But when you go on the inside, it's roach infested. <laughs> Holes in the walls. Pissy rooms. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said it again. Excuse me. It's nasty. The inside is jacked up, but we look so good on the outside. You say, Pastor, what does that have to do with us? As saints. It ain't even how you dress no more. You can be suited up, fresh shoes, dress, hat, white sneakers, jeans, creased up, shirt pressed, hair cut, hair did. But the inside is raggedy. Cobwebs in the heart. Heart, spirit is filled with malice. Hurt and pain and struggle. I don't want to go on no more. But the outside is saying, everything is in order. My life is strong and standing well. But the inside is screaming to be free. The outside is saying, I got it all right. My finances are in order. My relationship is in order. My job is great. I'm happy all the time, but the inside is darkness and pain and struggle. Looking for somebody to push the relief button. But if we only knew what was on the inside, the very pain that's trying to share the space with the anointing that said you've been free indeed can be released. The very struggle that's trying to share the space with the anointing can be released. Uh -huh. Even the old cowboy days had that much said. When there was a bad cowboy and a good cowboy, the good one would always say, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. <laughs> the Bible got that much sense. You can't put new wine and old wine skins because the new wine will burst the bag and all the wine will be on the floor. Uh -huh, you know, spill your seed on the ground. Mm. The very thing that you're trying to hold on to and contain to fight another day, you're trying to be carnal at the same time and the flesh burst and the new thing that was in you is all over the ground because it wasn't able to hold on because the carnal mind, the life, the worldly thing is still trying to be manifested in your life instead of saying, I'm new. I'm made whole. I've been set free. I've been restored. I'm alive in Him. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at the Word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six through ten. 
glad to see some Bible terminal. The King James Version reads this. I want to read this first so you can get the understanding of what they're saying, and then I'm going to go into New Living. Is that okay? Amen. It reads this. For God, who have commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. For we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Mm -hmm. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Yes. Cast down, but not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Amen. Listen to the New Living Translation. It reads this. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. He's saying that we're these containers that at any time we can break under pressure. Mm -hmm. Any time we can break, if we just if slip out of the hand of God, we can fall. But inside of us, even though we're fragile, there's this great treasure. Uh -huh. There's this thing that's more precious than gold, more precious than diamonds, mm -hmm. that's in us. Yes. This fragile thing that at any time we can break. When the storms of life are raging in, we can crumble and fall apart. But there's still something on the inside oh, yes. that's oh, greater. Oh, yes. Even in our fragileness. Yes. Amen. This makes it clear that our great power is from God. Listen to what he said. This makes it clear that our Great power is from God and not us. Yeah. What keeps you from going smooth crazy mm -hmm. is not because you said, I don't want to drive off the cliff and die. It's the Holy Ghost saying, stop right. and hold on for another day. That's right. It's not you that's saying, I'm going to slit my throat because I'm all out of money. When you just say, I'm going to kill myself because I'm broke and I'm never going to make it. But it's the Holy Ghost. It's the anointing. It's the power yes, of yes. God that's in you that's saying, you don't belong to you. Amen. This is my body and you can't die Amen. because I have given you life. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. There's something greater on the inside. Oh, yeah. That when you just want to lay down. And die. That thing that's on the inside saying, I rose up. Yes, yes, yes. I died mm -hmm. that you may live. That thing on the inside is the very thing that says, when we are pressed on every side by troubles, mm -hmm. that thing that's on you says, but we are not crushed. Mm -hmm. That thing on the inside says, we are perplexed, but not driven to despair. The power in you doesn't take you into trouble. Uh -huh. We are not, we are hunted down, but we are never abandoned. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm being killed every day. God, help me. God is saying, you're being hunted, but you're not being caught. Thank you. 
We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Amen. You can get knocked down, but you get up and dust yourself off. Amen. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Amen. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus Amen. may be seen in our bodies. Amen. How many scriptures do we have to go through this church to show you that through suffering, mm -hmm. God is manifested? Through my pain, the glory is established. Through my heartaches, Jesus is manifested. Through my struggle, Christ is manifested. Through my heartaches, Christ is manifested. Even though I'm breaking, but the inside is holding me together. Yes. If you only knew what was on the inside. Listen. In the New Testament, there is two meanings to the word treasure. You got the material treasure, and you have the spiritual treasure. Now, you got to figure out what treasure are you operating in. You can't have both. This is one thing that you can't have both of. You can't have your cake and eat it too in this situation. You can't have evil and want to be good when you feel like it. It doesn't work that way. Because right. evil is breaking you down. Good is trying to hold you together. Right. Evil is trying to kill you, and good is trying to keep you alive. Yeah. Evil is trying to stop your life source, and evil is trying to resuscitate you. Uh -huh. Did I get that wrong? Yeah. Good <laughs> is trying to resuscitate you. Yeah. Evil is trying to slit your throat. And good is trying to give you a trachea. Yes, yes. Evil is trying to make you have a heart attack. And good is trying to create in you a clean heart. Uh -huh. If you only knew mm -hmm. what was on the inside. Look, I got scripture to go with. Let's talk about this material treasure. The diamonds that all the women love. Every woman love a diamond. If you can't afford a real one. I don't know why they do it, but you go try to buy the biggest cubic zirconia. <laughs> when even you know that if that was real, you couldn't afford it. Uh -huh. So instead of buying a nice little realistic one, you're going to go buy a four carat cubic zirconia. Uh -huh. This is why we have a form of godliness uh -huh. with no power. That you can save for two days, and now you want to go buy a $500 suit and thinking that's keeping you from backsliding. All right, the now. suit is not yeah. keeping you from backsliding. It's the thing that's on the inside. Y'all right, right. going to help me yeah. preach today? Are we still tired from this day? <laughs> Trust me, I want to go back to bed. Amen. <laughs> you get saved and you see the mothers in the... The women that have been in church for a while, they skirts along with the nice stilettos and they shouting and they holding it down. And you say, I want to be like that. So you go to Ross and get your nice three inch heels and your nice shirt and your, your dress is nice and it's fitted, your hair is good. And you think that makes you a woman of God now, but it's the thing that's on the inside. You think that now that you went to seminary, that now you got a degree. You got a doctorate in theology and a pastorate, and now you can quote the Hebrew and Greek, that you can break down the manifestation of Jesus Christ, that you can declare the oracles of God, that you can lay hands and the sick will recover. You think that you're able to be called a preacher, that now you made it and you have arrived. You didn't arrive. It's the thing that's on the inside that established you. My goodness, make sure I put this on today. Amen. You think that you made it, you have all things in order, that my life is in order. I have a job. I have a beautiful wife. I have a fine husband. Beautiful kids. They all respect me and love me. 
It's all in order. It doesn't matter what goes on. My house is in order. My life is right. Everything I need, I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. I made it. It's not you that did it. You didn't oh, find the job. All right. You weren't the only one that made the baby. But uh -huh. God said, I knew them babies from the foundation uh -huh. of the world. I knew you before you knew yourself. Right. God said, I chose your wife, your husband. It wasn't you that made you comfortable. It was the thing that was on the inside. My God, if you only knew what you had on the inside, you would realize if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? My God, I'm going to preach today. Go ahead, go ahead. Man, I just want somebody to be free and shout today. I know y'all comfortable, but move the chat and shout the victory. Look at, look at, look at look. material things. It says this, Matthew 13 and 44. Matthew 13, verse 44. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44. It says this, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. Mm -hmm. In his excitement, his joy, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. The kingdom of God is like a treasure that is discovered by us. Uh -huh. And once we found it, we hide it mm -hmm. that nobody else can get it. Wow. And then we take all that we have mm -hmm. to protect it that nobody else can get it. This is what we do in church. Mm -hmm. We get baptized. Mm -hmm. We receive the Holy Ghost. We speak in other tongues. Now we think we made it, we delivered, we're set free, we love. We have a form of peace. Uh -huh. We're somewhat of saints and Christians of God. But now we don't want to tell nobody else the very thing that can make them free, that made you free. We don't want to share it. So we hide and we contain it. We take our ball and go home because we don't want nobody else to play. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the power that's in you. Says you don't want to use it. You don't want nobody else to have it. The power that's in you. Says you don't want to be manifesting in your life and be delivered and free. You don't want nobody else to be free. Everybody has to be miserable because of you. Material treasure. You can't hold or hide the power of God. It's in control. It's overwhelming. It sustains you. The very one that said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same thing said, I come down in flesh to be manifested among men, that I may dwell with them in spirit and truth and grace. And show them that I've come to share it to the world. Not to hide it and pick and choose. Uh -huh. But I wish behind all things that all men will be saved yes. and come to repent. And everybody yes. can have a piece yes. of this treasure. Yes. But us, uh -huh. who's been called by his name, uh -huh. we get it and we want to just hold on to it and wait. And God, if you will just bless me today. God, if you just heal me today, but until you do, I'm going to hide you in the closet. Until you bless me, I'm going to keep it to myself. I'm not going to testify. I'm going to keep it quiet because you haven't done nothing for me yet. I can't tell something about something unless you bless me. I won't tell nobody that you're real until you heal me. I won't tell nobody that I'm saved until you deliver me. I won't tell nobody that I'm ready until you make me. But when you know what's on the inside, even when you're broke, you say, he's my source. He's my very present help. He has a cattle and a thousand to heal, and it belongs to me. The earth is his and me that dwell therein. When I know what's on the inside, in my pain, I still say,
say God is real. In my struggle, I still say he's keeping me. In my flesh, I still say the spirit of God is rising up because I know what's on the inside. Listen, let's talk about a material thing. This is what keeps us jacked up. We always want, man, everybody want money. Everybody want to be rich and want to be home and just to go say, I just want to go for a ride today. I just want to go on a cruise. I just want to go to the movie. Everybody want to do that. But God is blessing you according to your faith. If we would just be faithful with the material things he has given us. We can do those things. Yes. Amen. Amen. I was just thinking about it again today. Sister Jackie was talking to her sister. They were talking about our grandson. And she watching him. And, and I was just sitting there. I'm just like driving. I'm like, God, we want this house. And she's not working. God said, man, mm -hmm. do you not realize? It's going on two years that you are the only income in the house. Mm -hmm. And everybody is happy. Wow. They going to the movies. They getting new gear. You got a nice ride. The house is on. You got big TVs in like almost every room. Yeah, so I got a big one. He just got the old one with the big back on it. <laughs> but it's big. New furniture. Everything. Everybody have We can go do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We've never been on more trips in my life in 14 years. And I was just driving, I started smiling, and I said, thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Had two jobs, uh -huh. and we was almost homeless. Mm -hmm. But when we realized it was on the inside, you just thank him. Oh, yes. You say, you know something, I can't help but to magnify you, because without oh, yes. you, oh, yes. Oh, yes. where would I be? I understand what's on the anointing, what's on the inside. Yes, it's the anointing. Yes. That destroys yokes and this heavy burden. It's the power of God. It's not my might. Yes. It's not my power. But his. Oh yes. Oh yes. Listen. Matthew 6 and 21. Let me talk about this material thing for a second. Matthew 6 and 21, it reads this. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. I'm saved. I'm saved. I love the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and tongue confess. But my heart is trying to get back home to my house mm -hmm. and relax in my new home. Mm -hmm. I'm here at church going through all the gimmicks of raising my hands and magnifying him. Uh -huh. But my mind is on my boyfriend or my girlfriend. Of how can I get back home and cuddle and be in relations as we always do? That's where my heart is. The one that created in me a clean heart He's there, but my mind is on all my money. That's where I want to be. I want to be in my bank account. I want to be in my safe deposit box. I just want to be able to roll around on my $3. That's where my heart is. You standing up for me, brother? That's all right. My desire is to be what makes me happy. But if you only knew what was on the inside, you would know that joy unspeakable and full of glory. You would know that when you wake up, I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm favored. I'm glorious. I'm magnanimously happy. I'm overwhelmed with joy. I can look to the hills and know that the glory of God is keeping me and watching me and sustaining me. I have no reason to be mad. But 
says, now I don't understand what's on the inside. I'm just going to be focused on my sleep train when I get home. Because I've been wore out by the picnic. And I'm tired. I think we all can repent for that one. Pray for me. Where is your treasure? Where does your heart really lie? Is it in what you think you did? Mm-hmm. Or is it with the one that made it able for you to do that? Mm-hmm. The one that said he's able to keep you from falling. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Look what he says. Luke chapter 12 verse 21. When you get Luke 12 and 21, scroll down to verse 34 and watch that one also. Luke 12 and 21. Yes, a person is a fool. Not a fool for Christ. A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. It's black and white. It's black and white. It's the word, it's the Bible. You're a fool to try to hold on to everything you have and have no relationship with God. This this is what he's talking about. This is the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. God is saying, man, I can make this life even better. He said, I followed your word. I'm acting like a saint. Mm -hmm. I'm always at church. I pay my tithes. Well, he said, that is not it. I need you to sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. But you said, I've earned this. i made this. I did this. I built this empire around me. I'm not going to give this away. And God is telling you, you're not fit for the kingdom. Because your possessions have you instead of me having you. That's it. That's it. You're a fool. You're stubborn. You're stick. Stiff-necked. You're ignorant. Because your relationship is not with me. It's with the material things. Your relationship is not focused on me. You're saying you're here. You're with the vision. You're saying you're with the church. But your mind is with your family. Your mind is on your job and your money. When he's saying forsake all things. Choose you this day, whether we good or evil, whether we man or whether we money or God. He even takes it to another level. He says it in the book, whether it be money or me. Mm-hmm. Money is the root of all evil. Don't be lovers of money. He said, don't give it away. Don't just throw it away. But if it has control over you, you're in trouble. If money is an important factor, you're in trouble. Past, I got to pay my bills. The cable is going off. The lights is going off. But God is supposed to be your source. Okay. Pastor, that rent is due. You ain't trying to hear me. Them car notes is due. Pastor, that insurance and registration is in that month. You're not even trying to hear what I'm trying to say. But God is supposed to be your source, your provider. No, Pastor, you still don't get it. You still don't get it. You gonna take me in when we get kicked out? You gonna help us when we're hungry? You're not getting it, God. That thing on the inside. When back to you again. When you're committed and faithful and upright and obedient, He is required to keep you, sustain you, hold you together, make sure you're not broken and weary, but make sure you're victorious in good standing and saved and sanctified. He is supposed to keep you from being hungry and homeless and sick and overwhelmed and depressed and oppressed. He's supposed to make sure you have joy. You're healed. You're saved. You're sanctified. You're victorious. You're overcoming when you are obedient. But when you just go on through this form and fashion of years or coming to religion and not living a nickel's worth of nothing, you don't really know what's on the inside. You just coming to take up a seat. 
There's no relationship outside the brick and mortar. There's no relationship outside the suite. There's no relationship outside the church complex. There's no relationship outside of that when the benediction goes forth. You don't realize what goes on in your life. Look. Here we go again. He repeats himself. Luke 12 and 34. Wherever your treasure is, there is the desires of your heart. You come to church all these years, but your same prayer is, Pastor, I want a spouse. I want to love. I want to feel love. I want to know love. And God is telling you every time you ask that question is, Learn how to love yourself. Learn how to love you. Learn how to love me. Love covers a multitude of sin. When you begin to know me and love yourself, you will be free. And then we can send you your spouse. But nobody wants baggage. Nobody wants somebody bound up. You don't marry a person in jail. Pastor. My God. Let me move on to the spiritual. Everybody has shut me down. That's all right. Let's talk about this spiritual treasure. Y'all gonna get it. We're gonna get saved. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Whether it's two or two hundred, we're gonna have some get right. We're gonna be blessed. Not because of us, but because of him. Spiritual treasure, when you really know what you know, what you know, what you know about God, about the authority, about the power, about the glory forever and ever, when you know, this stuff goes down. Yes. Yes. Matthew 19 and 21. Matthew 19 and 21. Somebody remind me in about 10 minutes to say, Pastor, don't forget to break down what treasure means. Somebody remind me, 10 minutes, just shout it out, it's okay. Amen. Spiritual treasure, Matthew 19 and 21. Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, if you want to be perfect without spot or blemish, without any issues, without any ghetto love in your life, without going from job to job, church hopping like a cricket, mm -hmm. just being perfect man or woman of God. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Go and sell all your stuff. Uh -huh. Not what I gave you, mm -hmm. but sell the stuff that you got on your own, that you got crooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sell all your stuff that you got on your own will. Uh -huh. yeah. Sell the stuff you like, all the dresses and stuff in your closet. Uh -huh. Sell the stuff you like, all the toys in your garage. You sell it. Uh -huh. All the suits that you don't wear, give them to somebody. I got a white suit. Is it white? It's, I got a cream three-piece with blue trimming. I ain't wore it yet. And I'm like, I'm going to wear it on a special occasion. It's just flossed up nice. This don't even wear it. I just look at it. I'm just like, I'm over it. Bless somebody with it. Amen. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. I have lost every church person that's even listening in the spirit realm. You want me to sell my stuff and give it to somebody less fortunate? Yes, if you want to be perfect. That thing that's keeping you from me, get rid of it. That thing that's sustaining you from going higher in me, get rid of it. That flesh that's keeping you from getting close to me, kill it. Paul said, I buff it. I beat down. I put a whooping on it. I bang it on the head. I catch a beat down. I gang bang on my flesh. Then I may get closer to God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's good. Y'all making me preach too hard up in here. Get delivered. So I can talk like this. You sell all your stuff and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. In heaven. You sell your stuff, and I will give you more than you ever had. Sell your raw suits, and I will 
give you Dolce & Gabbana shoes. Yeah, well, they got Dolce & Gabbana shoes? Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just making up stuff. She got a little excited, yo. Yo, she said, for real? I'm going to give it all my shoes from Rose. Don't, don't listen to me. I just threw something out there. Pastor, I don't see no Dolce & Gabbana. Whatever is keeping you from getting closer to God, get rid of that thing. You got malice on your heart. God is saying, kill it. You got past hurts and generational curses. God is saying, kill it. You're still frustrated from getting banged in the head at two years old. God is saying, kill it. Can these dry bones live again? Prophesy. Speak light. Encourage yourself. Do you not know what's on the inside? The seed of Abraham. The strength of Joshua. The anointing of Christ is in you. Yes, yes. Here we come, though. Here we come. Look. Then, come and follow me. See, this is a process. You just don't come to church and follow God. He's saying, deliver you. Work on you first. You just not going to come to church and be a disciple when you all jacked up, bound up, depressed, overwhelmed, broke, disgusted, busted, get of love. He's saying, get rid of you, uh -huh. and I will take over from there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let go of your life, and I will give you a better one. Then, yeah. come follow me. Amen. Man, can I get up? Can I, am I preaching? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I'm preaching. All right, right, I'm preaching. I want to know from the young folks. Amelia, I'm preaching. Yeah. Oh, my, my God. He spoke it out. <laughs> Listen, Luke 6 and 45. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good person. One in right standing. Produces good things from the treasure of a good heart. And an evil person produces the evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. In my way, boys, what you say <laughs> flows from what is in your heart. You look good, but evil is on the inside. You say you love me, but evil is always manifesting in your life. You say you're sanctified, but carnality is always rising up. You say you have the mind of Christ, but you're always thinking dirty. You say your heart is created and made new, but your heart is full of malice. You say your feet are shod with the gospel, but you're always in the wrong place at the wrong time. Come on now. Come on now. Why? Right. You say your hands are clean, but you're always touching on the wrong stuff. What you say is not what's going on in your life. Uh -huh. You say, I'm set apart. I'm called out of darkness yes. into a marvelous light. Uh -huh. But every time we see you, you're down. Uh -huh. You're in darkness. Yes. You're sad. Yes. You're broke. You're complaining. Yes. You're murmuring. You're dead. You're not alive. You're sick. Uh -huh. But if you only knew. Yes. You sound good mm -hmm. and look good, mm -hmm. but once we take a bite, mm -hmm. we're spitting you out. Mm -hmm. God said, I wish. Uh -huh. I'm just hoping, I'm just, somebody figured out, I wish you were either hot or cold. I wish you were just on fire for yes. the glory. Yes. I just wish you were sanctified every day. You carry around Bibles. You pray all day. You bless me all day. But if not, I just wish you was cold, heathen, yeah. thug life, a liar, malicious, uh -huh. a fornicator, yeah. a murderer, yes. a backbiter, uh -huh. a deceiver. The brother, do that. Yeah. But if you in the middle, God said, I'm going to hawk spit you out. Uh -huh. oh, yes. oh, yes. Hallelujah. He ain't going 
money to the bank yes. and you deposit it into the bank, mm -hmm. your mindset is, my money is now safe. Yes. Mm, that's what we I turn it into the hands of the bank. When I walk out, my money is safe. When I need it, I can come get it because I'm needed for a purpose. God is saying, when you was gone, when you was born in the sin, shaping in iniquity, yes, yes, there was yes. already a deposit made oh, on the inside. Oh, yeah. oh God. You, he said, but when you woke up and realized uh -huh. what has been deposited oh, on the inside, yes, yes, then yes. you know that when I walk in right with yes, him, yes. that I can go into the house. And when I need something, I can go in and yes, withdraw yes, yes, yes. at the appointed time. Yes, yes, yes. When I become weary, I can begin to pray to God. And because I'm walking right, He hears me. And He brings me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Because a deposit has been made. I'm righteous. I can go in and my deposit is safe. I'm sanctified. I can go in because my deposit is safe. I'm holy those field. Listen, hold that dog. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you a story. Come on now. Somebody's telling me the story, and I said, I'm using that on Sunday. <laughs> it goes with it. And then I'm coming in for the final part of our main scripture in 2 Corinthians. But I'm coming back to the deposit. Because no. y'all caught it too fast. No. They're trying to hype me up. <laughs> There's a story about people think that the oil wells is the richest places in the world. Mm -hmm. That because of the gas, that if you found oil on your property, you think that's the richest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. People think the banks are the richest thing in the world. But fact is, that's wrong. Who knows what the richest places in the world are? The richest places in the world are the graveyards. Because people die and take stuff with them. People die and take their talents, their gifts that God has given them. And they die without ever being used. Or letting that gift and talent be manifested. They didn't realize the deposit Jesus. that has been made in Woo. their life. So they died. And it was never used. It was never noticed. It was never manifested. It was never observed. Yes. It was never shared. It was never spoken. It was never displayed. They just kept it stored up for themselves because they thought it was safe. But God said, I deposit it for you to make a withdrawal and help somebody else. So there are people dying in the church without their gifts and talents being used. But in the closing, when us realize what we have on the inside, you can say this. That it doesn't matter what's going on. If it's honor. And dishonor. I'm going back to 2 Corinthians 6, 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the Amplified because I want y'all to hear this stuff out. That when you know it's the anointed in you, uh -huh. it's the Spirit of God in you. Uh -huh. When you know this, it says, in defaming and evil report and in praise and good report. It says, even when we are branded as deceivers or imposters and yet vindicated as truthful and honest. It doesn't matter. We can be imposters, but when we know what's on the inside, we're still truthful and honest. Yes. We are treated as unknown and ignored by the world, but yet we are well known and recognized by God and his people. Uh -huh. yes, yes. As dying but yet we are still alive. Yes. We're dying daily, but that thing on the inside is alive. Yes. We're dead, but that thing on the inside is bringing life in that more abundantly. Yes. You yes. died, yes. 
but you're still alive. How is that possible? Because the thing that's on the inside on, is keeping me alive. How can these dead bones live? Because I'm prophesying to that thing on the inside. I'm speaking to my deposit. I'm signing out my withdrawal slip. I say I need a fresh anointing. I need a deliverance. I need a change. I need you to bless me. I need you to enlarge my territory. If you would just make me a whole, then I would realize that my mind is made up. Chastened by suffering, but we're not killed. You get smacked in the face, but you're not dead. Mm -hmm. You get pushed into the corner, but you're not raped. Yes, yes. You get knocked down, but you still got helped up. Yes. Grieved and mourning, but we still rejoicing. Yes, you're sad, but you're still rejoicing mm -hmm. because you know what's on the inside. Yes. yes. Poor, broke, yet bestowing riches on many. Amen. You don't have a nickel, but you're still a blessing to somebody because you realize.